he's made claims of killing over 40 people and he's been sitting on death row in Idaho for nearly 40 years for the murder of one. Six on your side's McKenna King tells us the story of a man who could potentially be one of the worst killers in Idaho history that many Idahoans don't even know about. John, his name is Thomas Eugene Creech, and he's been sitting on Idaho death row for over 37 years now for the murder of prison inmate David Dale Jensen on May 13th of 1981 fairly graphic and gruesome murder. At the time of the murder of David Dale Jensen in 1981, Jensen and Creech were both inmates housed inside the maximum security prison at Idaho's penitentiary. Creech was serving time for two murder convictions in Idaho. He was convinced to attack and did in fact murder David Jensen, a 22 or 23 year old young man who was in prison as a car thief. Those same documents say he and Thomas Creech were not on good terms. Creech was a janitor at the penitentiary at the time, and court documents say Creech and Jensen had argued about Jensen dirtying the floor, something Creech had to clean up. Because of his janitorial duties, Thomas Creech was the only prisoner who could be out of his cell at the same time as another inmate. Well, Chuck Palmer and I wrote letters to the uh, penitentiary warden during that time frame once he was released, warning the warden and the penitentiary system that this was a very dangerous criminal. Chuck Palmer was the Ada County Sheriff at the time. He and Jim Harris, Ada County prosecuting attorney in 1981, both believed that if Creech were given the opportunity to kill, even while in prison, he would act on it. That's what happened on May 13th of 1981. David Dale Jensen was released from his cell for an hour to exercise and shower. Jensen had other plans during that time, though. Court documents say David Dale Jensen attacked Thomas Creech with a sock filled with batteries. Creech was able to take the weapon from Jensen, and it was that same weapon Creech would later use to beat Jensen to death. Jensen is dead because he attacked Tom Creech without any provocation at all. Twice the same day with deadly force. The sock filled with batteries that killed him uh, he'd used on Creech earlier that day. And in an exclusive letter from Creech, he admits to that again, writing, quote, Yes, I killed that guy, but he attacked me. Creech went on to claim self-defense in the incident, but prosecution argued he went above and beyond self-defense. Following that murder in 1981, Creech was handed the death penalty sentence in 1983 for the second time in his life. You see, that wasn't his first murder. His criminal history started at the age of 16. Former Ada County Prosecutor Jim Harris says Creech spoke to him about his childhood. I think it was it was potentially the loss of his father at a very young age, particularly since the man essentially died in his arms. His first enemy, I think, his first the first attempted murder was the the, the male nurse that uh, failed to get help to his father. Uh, uh, before he died. The Journal News out of Hamilton, Ohio, writes that Creech claims he committed his first murder at the age of 17 by, quote, drowning a friend in New Miami who he believed was responsible for the traffic death of his girlfriend. The paper also states Creech claims to have killed five people from a motorcycle gang in Ohio for, quote, satanic cult worship rituals. In a United Press International article from 1986, writer Steve Green says Creech ran away from home and claims to have killed a man in San Francisco in 1965. During that time in San Francisco, sources say Thomas Creech became involved with the Church of Satan before it was officially organized in 1969. In 1973, Creech married Thomasine Lauren White. That same year, both of them were wanted in the connection of the murder of Paul C. Schrader in Tucson, Arizona. The Tucson Daily Citizen paper on January 4th, 1974 reports, Paul C. Schrader was stabbed to death at the downtown motor hotel in Tucson on Arizona. Creech was arrested for the murder in Beaver, Utah and taken back to Arizona to face charges. But after hours of deliberation, 23 year old Creech was acquitted of the Tucson murder. In 1974, Creech and his wife Thomasine moved to Portland. A United Press International article states that Thomas Creech spent some time in the Oregon Psychiatric Hospital in Salem. After he was released, he moved into the St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Portland and began work as their resident maintenance worker. In the exclusive letter Creech wrote to us, he says his wife Thomasine was raped by 11 men and tossed out a window four stories high that left her, quote, 
paralyzed and damaged mentally. She later died by suicide in the Oregon State Hospital. His letter to us also states that he killed some of the men who allegedly raped his wife. Also in 1974, Creech was convicted of killing 22-year-old William Joseph Dean. An article from the United Press International states that Dean's body was found in Creech's living quarters inside the St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Portland. And later that same year, two traveling painters were found shot to death in Idaho. Authorities say Thomas Creech and his girlfriend Carol Spaulding were hitchhiking from Lewiston to Donnelly, Idaho, when two men by the name of Edward T. Arnold and John Wayne Bradford picked them up in their 1956 Buick. Thomas Creech shot John and Edward, then partially buried their bodies off Highway 55 in Donnelly. Investigators later found that 1956 Buick abandoned near Cascade, Idaho, and according to the Washington Daily Chronicle, inside the car they found the blood of one of the victims and shell casings. The judge in the case, J. Ray Durchy, says Creech denied killing the two in Idaho in court, but admitted to being a mass murderer. Judge Durchy recorded his recollection of Creech's original 1975 trial in an audio recording for the Idaho Historical Society before his passing. It was verified that he, they did find some of the bodies that he identified for them and showed them where it was. That was his defense in my case, he says. My goodness, I'm admitting I've killed all these other people. I wouldn't deny this if I'd done it. A statement from the Idaho Supreme Court notes, Creech has admitted to killing or participating in the killing of at least 26 people. The bodies of 11 of his victims who were shot, stabbed, beaten, or strangled to death have been recovered in seven states. They found a large number of uh, skeletons that, that Tom led them to in a mine shaft in California. Judge J. Ray Dershey also also made this statement inside the courthouse in Wallace, Idaho. Law enforcement officers were worried about him in the trial, worried about security because uh, oh, there were rumors going around that he'd been a member of Hell's Angels and they were going to come up there and break him out when I moved him up to Wallace to try him up there where there hadn't been any publicity about his case. Judge Dershey found Creech guilty of the Donnelly murders and sentenced him to hang in March of 1976. At that time, Idaho's law stated a first-degree murder charge was a mandatory death sentence. That law was later ruled unconstitutional by the Idaho Supreme Court in 1979, and Creech was sentenced to life in prison. That didn't sit well with Sheriff Palmer or Prosecutor Jim Harris. In our opinion, Creech was a psychotic and he didn't like inmates and he would probably kill someone if they didn't supervise him very closely around other inmates. That statement almost a foreshadow of what was to come a mere two years later when Thomas Creech killed again. The prosecution quotes this statement made by Creech in court. And okay, I kicked him a couple of more times and he was laying there bleeding real bad and breathing real funny. And in the midst of appeals, former Ada County Deputy Prosecutor Roger Bourne made this statement in court in 1995. If the death penalty doesn't fit this defendant, who doesn't fit? Uh, that this defendant is a mass murderer. He's uh, shown extreme violence while he's in the penitentiary. Uh, if it, if it, the legislature didn't intend it to fit this defendant, uh, who could it fit any better? Creech was scheduled for execution again in 1999, but on June 14th of that year, the federal district court granted a stay of execution. And as of 2019, no execution date is set. And coming up Sunday at 10 on 6 on your side, we'll attempt to uncover the cost of death row here in Idaho using the Thomas Creech case as an example and try to find out how much it's costing Idaho taxpayers to keep him housed on death row. And fascinating. I think we should point out uh, uh, this video was not provided to us by the Department right, of Right, that's video that we there. obtained by ourselves, uh, our and photographer and I. actually conversed with him. Exactly, so we, we went in and we toured death row and we asked him if we could take some video of him on death row and moving around in his cell and he was very, uh, yeah, uh, he was very kind about it and let us take that video. Okay, more to come. Yes. All right, thanks McKenna. The cost to kill in Idaho. It's a number we've attempted to uncover here at Six on Your Side for the last few years regarding death row inmates in the Gem State. On Friday night, Six on Your Side's McKenna King told you the story of the longest living death row inmate currently housed in Idaho's maximum security prison. And now she's attempting to find out how much it's costing the state and you to keep him there. 
Thomas Creech has been on and off death row in Idaho for nearly 43 years. That's a lot longer than the average death row inmate sits behind bars after getting the highest possible sentence. Our big question is why has an inmate been sitting on death row that long and who is in charge of keeping that tab? When I asked for the death penalty against Tom Creech, I definitely did believe that he should suffer the death penalty. That's former Ada County Prosecutor Jim Harris, who called for the death penalty against Thomas Eugene Creech in 1982 for the murder of a fellow inmate. That was the second time Creech was sentenced to death row. But today, Jim Harris has got a slightly different perspective. I don't believe, quite frankly, that uh, Tom Creech, at least based on the murder that he committed in the penitentiary, should be executed. And I don't say that easily. But he does say that because he believes there are inmates serving lesser sentences for more heinous crimes. And despite a list of other murders Creech has confessed to and some even convicted of, his current death sentence is for the murder of that one inmate. And that's not the only reason Harris thinks Creech and other inmates should no longer be sentenced to death row in Idaho. It's a waste of time. It's a terrible waste of money that's being expended in these death penalty cases, and they're never going to happen. So the judges ought to just simply bear up and, and sentence these people to fixed life and leave it at that. So how much is the cost of representing and prosecuting an inmate on death row in Idaho? That's a question we've attempted to answer for years. We filed dozens of public records and FOIA requests with the Idaho Department of Correction, the state and county treasurers, the state control Office, Ada County Prosecutor's Office, Ada County Records, the Idaho Supreme Court, the State Appellate Public Defender's Office, and the Idaho District Court. Coming up empty handed, getting responses like, those records are too old, or check with this office, they might have it. So we asked Creech's lawyer with the Federal Defenders of Idaho. Her response was that the Federal Defender Services of Idaho falls under the judiciary branch of the federal government, and as such, they are not subject to the Federal Freedom of Information Act, which is only applicable to the executive branch of government. The only numbers we were able to obtain were those associated with the cost of simply housing an inmate. IDOC didn't keep track of those numbers until fiscal year 2008, but the cost to house any inmate at IDOC since that time is around $350,000. Whether you're on death row or not, that number remains constant. The number that varies by case is the cost of representation and prosecution. In Creech's case, that number has been adding up since the early 80s, and it's costing taxpayers a lot of money, money we can't track because it's not public record. Former Ada County Prosecutor Jim Harris does believe in the death penalty, but he also believes it would save Idahoans a minimum of hundreds of thousands of dollars per case if people were no longer sentenced to death row in Idaho. There's something inherently wrong with the death penalty system as, as utilized in the Ninth Circuit and in every state, including Idaho, in the Ninth Circuit. There are a bunch of goofballs in California who, who simply are messing up the system to the point where it, ha it should just stop until things change with regard to, uh, to that district. With that said, two Idaho death row inmates have been executed in the last 10 years under the Ninth Circuit Court. Paul Ezra Rhodes was executed in 2011 after serving 24 years on death row, and Richard Levitt was executed in 2012 after serving 28 years on death row. Currently, Idaho has eight inmates housed on death row, and the longest serving is Thomas Creech. The appeals process in the case of Thomas Creech has been going on for nearly 30 years, and according to Jim Harris, that appeals process process can continue until the Ninth Circuit Court puts an end to it. As of November 3rd, 2019, no execution date has been set. Reporting in studio, McKenna King, six on your side.